I'm Kayla Tony, Associate Counsel at First Liberty Institute. Stephanie Taub and I wrote the article, A Chord of Three Strands, How Kennedy versus Bremerton School District Changed Free Exercise, Establishment, and Free Speech Clause Doctrine, which was published in the Federalist Society Review. In June 2022, the Supreme Court held that the First Amendment protects Coach Joseph Kennedy's right to pray after public school football games. For Coach Kennedy, this means he is back to work. But what does it mean for the rest of America? Lower courts have already cited the Kennedy opinion more than 80 times. Kennedy emphasizes the overlapping protections provided by the free exercise, establishment, and free speech clauses. A believer's religious speech is protected by both the free exercise and free speech clauses, and the free exercise and establishment clauses are not in tension, but work together to protect people's right to exercise their religion freely without coercion by the government. Kennedy did not break new ground in the free exercise context, but its explanation of current doctrine has proved influential. According to Kennedy, government action may violate the free exercise clause if it, one, expresses hostility toward religion, as in Masterpiece Cake Shop, two, targets or discriminates against religion, as in the Lukumi case, three, prohibits religious conduct while permitting secular conduct that undermines the government's asserted interests in a similar way, as in Fulton v. City of Philadelphia, or four, provides a mechanism for individualized exemptions, also in Fulton. Lower courts are citing Kennedy's free exercise framework in all sorts of contexts. For example, a Native American student's rights were violated when she was not allowed to have an eagle feather on her graduation cap because other students were allowed to modify their caps for non-religious reasons. Kennedy's most significant contribution has to do with the Establishment Clause, the Supreme Court overruled the Lemon Test. The Lemon Test asked judges to consider whether a challenged government action had the intention or effect of promoting religion or caused excessive entanglement with religion. As the Kennedy opinion says, this three-part test invited chaos and created a minefield for legislators and courts. Justice Scalia famously described the Lemon Test as a ghoul in a late-night horror movie. Now that the ghoul is buried, courts must instead look to historical practices and understandings to interpret the Establishment Clause. Lower courts have gotten the message. Only two of the cases citing Kennedy so far have even considered applying lemon in their analysis. Kennedy is having real effects in this arena. One case found that opening court sessions with prayer does not violate the Establishment Clause because it is a historic practice and lemon no longer applies. Finally, the court held under the Free Speech Clause that Coach Kennedy's prayer was private speech, not government speech, and thus that it was protected by the First Amendment. Typically, public employees have limited protection under the Free Speech Clause. Their right to speak as citizens is balanced by their responsibility to speak as state employees. Kennedy applied the existing balancing test that takes these interests into account and found that a private prayer, even though it took place around students and on school property, was not government speech. The court also made clear that religious expression should not be treated as second-class speech, and that, for example, a Muslim teacher wearing a headscarf or a Christian aide praying over her lunch in the cafeteria would be protected. A lower court has since found that a university football coach could display a religious poster because it was private, not government speech. In the short time since the Kennedy decision, the case has proven influential and it will likely continue to have an impact beyond the football field.